dark, dark tune, there was a dark, dark street, and in the dark, dark street, there was a dark, dark office. In the dark, dark office, there were some dark, dark stairs, and down the dark, dark stairs, there was a dark, dark room, and in the dark, dark room was where the worst wrestling tropes go to die. <laughs> Hello, I'm Ross Twiddell from Cultaholic Wrestling and welcome to the latest instalment of Straight to Hell, the show where, of course, my illustrious guest offers up a list of their pet peeves from the world of professional wrestling and then they all get sent down straight to hell to rot for the rest of eternity. Joining us today is a man who you might know from his time with New Japan Pro Wrestling, a man who you might know from his time with WWE, and a man who currently resides in the Impact Wrestling Tag Team Division alongside his good brother, Luke Gallows, who, by the way, they take on the North this coming Saturday night at Turning Point for the Impact Wrestling Tag Team Championships. I am, of course, speaking about the machine gun, Carl Anderson. And just a little bit of a warning, dear viewer, this episode of Straight to Hell is a little bit different from the norm as we spend a lot of time speaking about talking shopper mania. And rightfully so, in my opinion, because if you saw the first one, you will know that talking shopper mania 2, which, by the way, happens this Friday night, November the 13th, is something that needs to be talked about at length and then a little bit more. So enough about me rambling about Talking Shopper Mania 2. Let's go and listen to me and to Carl Anderson ramble about Talking Shopper Mania 2. Over to Ross and Carl. So we're joined by Carl Anderson. Carl, how are you doing today? I'm good, man. Really good. And yourself? Yeah, I'm not too bad, thank you. So we're here to talk about Talking Shopper Mania 2, Rise of the Torturer. Um, but yes. before we do so, I need to put you on the spot and just ask you the same question I asked Rocky Romero. Uh, can I have some whiskey and or wine? Yes. The, 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 so as, as soon as I see you and as soon as we can smuggle alcohol into the country, we'll bring you everything, <laughs> brother. But the only thing that's live right now is the wine because going through the loopholes of of trying to sell whiskey and beer and alcohol, we just thought, you know, dude, I just thought this business, hey, man, I want to create a beer, bro. I'm, I'm the machine gun. Everyone knows I love beer. Gallows likes this. Rocky likes this. We're going to make a beer. Over. Oh man, this shit's hard, dude. <laughs> trying to like, because <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, we got the beer down, we, but then you got to try and get a get get a, a brewery and a distillery to to be able, and especially in the COVID times right now, to get people to ship stuff. And man, it is a lot of loopholes, man. But it's coming, it's coming. So how does that process work? I'm just intrigued. Do, do the breweries it's, come to you with something they already have, and then you put your name on it? Yeah, well, you know, so no, so we wanted it to taste different. We wanted we wanted something like a, a brew. A brewery has a certain amount of beers, and then we told them what kind we want. We wanted to be, you know, taste like this, taste like that. Throw some some lime in there because we all like lime and citrusy stuff. And um, so yeah, yeah, that. And then they they make it, they brew it, but then like the shipping laws come into effect, and then you gotta you got to be able to ship something from, for example, Tennessee to Alabama, and it's got to go. They've got to have there, – there's just so many certain rules and laws that go. It, it's pretty insane. Like with the whiskey, the guy just brought – we said, dude, we like – make us a whiskey. I don't care what it tastes like. Just make us one. <laughs> and we and then we tasted it, and I was like, man, this is pretty good, pretty smooth. And same with the wine. that we, we, we You know, Rocky pretty much handled that, and him, Rocky, and his wife. And, and, and you just taste the next – we, we all like to drink. You know, everyone likes to drink, right? Yeah. I hope Probably I get too to much. <laughs> I hope I get to taste it one day. I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> yeah, 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 for sure. It, 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 as soon as we can get over there, we'll bring it to you. Right then, so on to Talk and Shop Mania 2, The Rise of the Torturer. And obviously, one of the headline matches is a ball-for-ball -ball match. Uh, yes. And obviously, when you hear that, you think of Rey Mysterio, you think of Seth Rollins, and you think of ping-pong balls. So I need to ask you, <laughs> were there any ping-pong balls used with some felt-tip pen making a, a sort of, you know, design on it? Were there any ping-pong balls used in the making of this match? Absolutely not, you know, and everything we do is kind of like when, when we saw that they were doing a, an eyeball for an eyeball match, it was just like, man, we got to have, we got to have some fun with this. So like, you know, Sex Ferguson and Chad Too Bad are in this, in this heated feud for years, right? And so what better way to, to try and settle this than, than ball for ball? Whoever cuts the other person's ball sack out <laughs> wins. And it only has to be one ball, right? So that, that that's the thing. But no, and 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 there, there is, you know, there's some real looking balls that that people will see, and and it's just it, a lot of it, it's crazy because a lot of it is, it's just the banter back and forth. We're just improving back and forth, talking shit back and forth. Like, 
I take a rope and tie it, you know, Chad too bad ties a rope around Sex Ferguson's nutsack and then he ties it, <laughs> he ties it to a semi truck and he tries to put it in reverse and Sex Ferguson is screaming. I'm trying to rip his balls off. So, I mean, it's, it's a lot of fun. You make sure you get your head right before you before you start watching it. <laughs> this sounds like something that should be on Pornhub rather than the rest no, of the it, it, <laughs> it, It's not. It's not that bad. It's. It, it is. It is absolutely rated R, but we don't go anywhere past that. You know what I mean. And uh, obviously, the, the, I guess the overriding theme of the show is the rise of the torturer. Um, is he still yeah. fascinating with uh, with torturing people's cocks? Um, yeah, that's. And that's if so, the torturer. <laughs> if so, I'm just I'm wondering, sort of, with the ball for a ball match. And the torture getting involved as well, potentially. Could we end up in a situation where Sex Ferguson or Chad Too Bad are almost like an action man in the cross area with no cock or balls whatsoever? <laughs> like, it, you know, when Talking Shopamania 1 went off the air, you see this guy crawl out of, the, out of the grave with a hockey mask on, right? And then it goes to the end. And the Young Bucks messaged me, messaged me in Gallows and go, so we know who that, that character is that crawled out of the grave, but... Nobody else does, unless unless you really, really followed us for a long time. He goes, so it just looks like gallows in a hockey mask crawling out of a grave. Nobody realizes it's the cock torture, you know. So like, <laughs> so we had to, we have to do a little bit of storytelling with part with with talking shop mania two here. We we throw a little. Uh, the whole thing is built around the cock torture, and it, and in a very slow, slow build. Yes, you'll get to see why he is, who is that guy, and of course the main events ball for a ball and. You know, my my money would bet that the cock torturer would come out of nowhere somewhere, but we'll see what happens. I've got to be honest, I watched Talking Shop with Mania 1 on my birthday, and what a fine way to spend a, a birthday evening that was. Couldn't have had it Nothing. any better. And Nothing I was confused better. watching the, the cock torturer turn up. I had no ideas, but I watched the uh, the sort of the, the look back at history that just sort of went live on YouTube recently, and the, the, the stuff outside the Tokyo Dome was quite something. I mean, what a promo from that guy, right? <laughs> what a promo from the cock torture. It's unbelievable. <laughs> that's when you do. So we, we would be in Japan for a month at a time. And that's where, like, we started getting bored and we saw our creativeness gets kind of like, we just, we want to make us. So we made a movie and it was basically about, or about the cock torture. And then next thing you know, now he's live on pay-per-view. And like, imagine when we tried to call the pay-per-view people and explain to them what we wanted to do and talk to Chop Mania 1. And they were like, what are you talking about? So it took a it took a long time. <laughs> it took a lot of it took a lot of calls to, to to get them to to understand what we were doing. And this is where like the COVID environment almost allowed Talking Shop of Mania or Talking Shop to flourish because I, otherwise this this would never would have happened. Because we probably would never would have left WWE and never would have had this opportunity to 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 restart Talking Shop and then now to have part two of the of the worst pay per view of all time. So obviously uh, the sort of story goes that when you left WWE, uh, Gallows just said to you, oh, I want to do this in my back garden. Are you, are you in or are you, are you not? Um, yeah. Having gone through that first one, what made you want to come back for some more? Was it just the overriding well, success or was it something else? Well, I, 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 you know, I didn't because it was a lot of work. As, as, as silly as it looks, it is a lot of work. You know, we got to get to Atlanta. We got to spend a couple of days away. We got to work hard all day long. It's crazy as it sounds. It, it's a lot of work. Then you got to do, you know, you got to promote this thing. And then... You got to spend money on this thing. Like it's hard, but it's fun. So like once our creative juices started flowing and we started talking about what we're going to do for the ending of Talking Shop Mania 2 and like what matches are we going to have? And like we started getting pumped up, started getting excited. And then like, I think it was me that said, yo, the rise of the, this has to be the rise of the cock torture. And so I was pushing for the cock torture to be in the title and they all were like, I mean, man, I don't think we can put cock in the in the pay-per-view thing. So <laughs> we had to pull that off. And if you get it, you get it. But like, I think just the, just to have fun and to be able to be creative and, and, and do what we do is that's like our drug, man, or whatever. That's the most exciting thing that we can have is just telling a story and, and getting and, and making people laugh and making people be entertained. And speaking of the, the creativity uh, standpoint of it all, I heard Gallo speaking about having to uh, keep a, a hearse on his driveway for a long yeah. time before the first one. Has there yeah. been anything like that in the build of the second one? Any sort of weird things having to be kept in show yeah. for the people to see? Well, the hearse is still there, right? So he was trying, he was trying to sell it. Some, some guy wanted to buy it, offered him some money for it even. So he went to try and get insurance on it. And the guy was like, well, how? Okay, so how many bodies are you going to be, uh, you know, moving in this hearse? He goes, no, sir, it's not like that. And he goes, well, 
well, why do you have a hearse in your house? He goes, well, it was for a movie. And he goes, well, I don't know how to insure this. So it was like this, 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 <laughs> this insane back and forth. The hearse is still there and I don't want to give anything away, but the, there, there's some, there's some, a couple of good things. Like for example, Sex Ferguson has a truck and we drew dicks and balls all over it and like a few buddy on it, but we, they, they drew it with like permanent marker and you can't get it off. So guy was like <laughs> driving around town with, with a truck with balls all over it. <laughs> so there you go. <laughs> and uh, so I, I guess, I don't know if you want to obviously not give away any spoilers, but how did you go over, over budget with this one? I didn't know that because obviously the first yeah. one had all the production value in the world anyway, but the second one's gone over budget. So it must be one hell of a thing in store. For yeah, us no, hundred percent. So like, you know, with Chavo versus Chico, our first thought was um, we wanted it to, my, my, that was, this was actually my idea. I wanted it to be like, you know, they want, I wanted them to have a big fight where like, almost like Anchorman style and then Monty Python style where maybe somebody loses an arm and we just make it look really cheesy and stupid. Then we were like, well, man, let's, let's just say talking shop mania got so big that we had to have it in two different locations. So then we're like, well, let's shoot something in Los Angeles. So we told rock to, Hey dude, just, just handle this. So he found a production crew that was out there, shot something all day with all this stuff of, you know, Ch Chico has a team, Chavo has a team and they fight and it's this insane fight. Well, he sends us the finished product and I'm, and I feel like I'm watching Matrix Reloaded and I'm like, bro, how much did you spend? He's like, I oh, will talk about that. But like, there's a bazooka. I mean, like you got that, uh, Tyra Valkyrie. She's like ducking under it, Matrix style. I mean, somebody, somebody has a, like a, a an Uzi and like and shoots, uh, shoots like a zombie that's coming after him and you can see the blood splatter. And I mean, it's pretty cool. It's, it almost breaks out the monotony of the bad wrestling that you'll see <laughs> in the four, in the three or four matches before, which is also really funny because us on commentary are losing our minds at how bad some of this stuff is. And I'm going to try and be a bit cheeky here. We know about yeah. uh, re retribution, retropoopshin. Poop Sorry, yeah. poopshin. They are going to be there, but there's also going to be two other factions, I believe. Uh, yes, can there you give, is. Can you give us any scoops on who they might be or what they might be about? So I'll say, if you guys remember Nature Boy Paul Lee from, from the first one, of course, he's a main star of ours. Well, he starts a faction. <laughs> and, um, and, and without giving it away, I, I'm going to tell you that he starts a faction with four people. And, and one of his guys that's in there is Randy Orton's brother, Nathan. So, <laughs> uh, so trust me, we, we, take it to a, we take it to a different level with that kind of stuff. And then there's a main event faction that pops out. Um, and then, of course, the very, very, very ending faction, which is going to blow everybody away and it's going to sell um a lot of t-shirts bash at the beach style and it's going to be uh the biggest main faction closes the show out and that's going to just it's just going to turn the talking shop mania uh universe upside down similar levels to bullet club or not quite I, blows the bullet club <laughs> out of the water and i've got to ask about nature boy paul lee because i'd never seen him before watching the first talking shop of mania and i need to know what it was like when you've got like scott steiner and the warlord coming over and then nature boy paul lee's there as well that's like the clash of the titans if there ever was one well like i don't think many many people heard of the nature boy paul lee until talking shop of mania <laughs> one, but it, unless you did some uh some some southern indies or whatever but he he's based out of uh ringle georgia uh, we met Gallows has known him for a long time from through those Southern, Southern Indies. And I think he, he runs a promotion somewhere down there. And, uh, when I saw him, man, I, I, so I must've met him probably six years ago when I saw him, I went, dude, that's, that is gold. And then, so he was one of our first guys. We knew we had to, we knew we had to have on the show, man. Like, it's just, it's, it, it, and he even he he even takes over. He's a star, man. In, in whatever way you want to say it, he's a star. What kind of way? I don't know, but he's a star. And is the Corvette actually his? Yes. No. Now, Nature Boy Paul Lee's got a lot of money. Trust me. Yeah. yeah. With he the brings blue across the window. Right across the window. And wait till you see. <laughs> wait until you see the Hummer. Or excuse me. Wait till you see the limo that he brings. Or I don't want to give it away. He brings his limo. He brings his limo to Talking Shop Mania too, and it's. And it's legit his, and it's unbelievable. And obviously, the, the, the Warlord, Virgil was there, I saw. Scott Steiner yeah. was there. Yeah. How, how was he when he arrived on the scene and just saw what was happening in front of his eyes? You know, Scott, like, he, he did full... He, we had a, a, a special on Access TV. Uh, M Impact allowed us, or Access TV allowed us to have a special called Talking Shop Full Keg. And uh, we had Scott on that. And Scott Steiner was there. He, so he got an opportunity to see our humor that day. 
So when he came to when he came to Talking Shop Mania too, he kind of he kind of knew he was in he was in store for something. And then we were trying to explain to him, you know, that like you're gonna it, it's the end of the ball for a ball match, and like you see we're we're on the ground, and you're wondering why we're holding our nuts and just whatever whatever. Like he sees us getting our balls pulled on, and he just goes, "What the." F-? And then we just go, finally, we just go, Scott, just do whatever you want. Like, it's fine. Say anything you want because you, you're big Papa Pump. You do whatever he wants. It's yeah, great. And, <laughs> and just finally, what, uh, before we get going with the straight to hell portion of the of the yeah. show, one of the the, the, the the funniest stories I heard coming out of the, the show the first time around was, uh, I don't know if it, you can class as Gallows as neighbor, but the guy down the road, the fire hydrant getting sort of damaged. Was there any similar yeah. instance this time around? So that happened, that, that, that the fire hydrant happened for part two. Oh, That's a part two thing. Thank yeah, God. that was where like, like when like Hornswoggle looked at me and goes, "Chad, you got to understand, like, you can't hit this thing, and you can't even try to hit it." I'm like, "What?" Then I drove by and went, "Oh my God, how did you hit this fucking thing?" <laughs> like, yeah, you know, the best part about uh, like the you know because so many people were inside of his house in the first one, they messed it up so bad. He locked off the upstairs, and so if I, so his house at least didn't take the beating that it was going to take. Mm-hmm. My favorite thing is the fact that there's. There's cock and balls draw, drawn all over his truck, and he doesn't he, he doesn't know how to get them off. It's a white truck too. <laughs> it sounds like it needs a respray. Quite yeah. an expensive job. It needs um, paint. And I was speaking to Rocky Romero just before we came on the air here today. Um, there's going to be a number three that's already set in stone. Or is that sort of dependent on? We've gone over budget. Is that de- solely dependent we've, on how many sales we do? <laughs> we've gone over budget. We need. We definitely need more sales. I'm not. I'm not dying to run to it, but we definitely have a storyline set in place that, well, that will be pretty funny. And I feel like if if people can just get invested in this story, and then, and then when they see the ending, they're gonna be like, oh, fuck, I gotta see part three. I gotta see part three. But is there a shooting time no is there a time no but we've got we have ideas for what we're what we want to for the story we want to tell and just in case people aren't aware where can we where can we see talking shop mania 2 talking shop mania 2 is available uh world worldwide on pay-per-view for sure i know in canada and america and then all over the world you can get on fight tv the fight tv app just just search talking shop mania 2 download that order it and you can watch it on demand forever Right then, so onto the straight to hell portion of the show. If I said to you, you could say anything about the life as a professional wrestler, maybe something about the professional wrestling business, maybe something from your fandom growing up, you could send that thing down to hell forever. What comes to mind? Just so anything that I want to send to hell, probably, uh, <laughs> man, so much things, man. I'm trying to think, trying to think, because there's so since the journey we'll, was so we'll try, great. We'll, tr- we'll try and fit three in, so they will g- give you some leeway to get more than one thing down there. Um, of all the things I've been through, probably uh, some of the political bullshit that I've had to deal with, I wouldn't mind just throwing that straight to hell. Um, some of because uh, I'm so I'm 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 so happy with everything that we've dealt with. Probably I would send. Uh, Gallows is um, when he first started with New Japan Pro Wrestling. He had he wore gloves that he never washed, and it smelled like like somebody sh- washed them and sh- and so I was sending those straight to hell for sure. I um, did a sorry con- sorry continue. Yeah, no, go ahead. I was uh, I did a straight to hell with Will Osprey a while ago, and one of the things he sent down was smelly wrestlers. So this ties together quite nicely. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Are there, are there, no. I, I, need, I need to push you. Are there any names renowned in the world of professional wrestling for having smelly gear? Oh, man. You know what? There's, <laughs> there's really not because we've all had smelly gear at a time. But if I sit and think about who's, who, who does smell, there was a guy that I started with back in, in, uh, in the year 2002, and his name, was, uh, his name was the Zodiac. And I know there's Zodiacs all over the world, but this was Zodiac number one, and he smelled, he smelled, he smelled pretty fucking bad. He was my number one, my very first match I ever had. So I'd like to send that gear down to hell. <laughs> And I've got to mention the, the 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 political stuff. I've got to yeah. try and press you. Anything in particular that you would like to go into? Obviously, no pressure. Um, no, and it's not political. So I, I don't. It's kind of hard to hard to uh, explain, I guess, because I feel like we came, we came to WWE with a with with already a, fo- a a nice following that had our backs, had our and 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 had our uh, supported us. And I feel like that we could have possibly have had a very different even though man I'm, I'm happy with my time there i just feel like we could have had a, it could have gone differently for us with the amount of with with the following that we brought to wwe yeah. um i just feel like there was there were people that that were pulling the rug from us uh who and why i don't know but it 
it definitely happened and that's just but that's also just the way it is and that's not that's just business so and this i'm guessing there's like there's you sort of feel like a maybe a sense of helplessness when you're in that situation there's nothing you can really do to sort of turn that tide around is there so i remember back back at the start of 2016 how when the four of you joined obviously the world melted (laughs) yeah but there you know there probably is and i don't want to sound like a like a whiny little bitch so it just is what it is it happened and uh hey you move on and i'm happier now that you know that that I, i'm at where i'm at i was just talking to my boss about a 10-year contract so i'm trying to get locked up with impact till 2030. really i don't think i don't think he. i don't think he, i wasn't sure i don't know if he agreed with it but i know he wants to work together forever so we'll see what happens well that must that's unprecedented in the world of wrestling a contract yeah. of that length surely that's what we're that's what we're pushing think, for right now i think I, kurt angle got offered one didn't he? he turned it down and then went back and tried to get it again i think that's the only sort of insight. maybe mark henry as well when he first joined wwe well that's i will say example. i asked for uh probably a couple of years ago i asked wwe for a for a lifetime contract for like i said 75 grand a year for life and they were like oh man i mean they were i was kidding but gallows was like shut the f- up about the money you know but that's right <laughs> I, said, I plan on living until i'm like 90 that's a multi-million dollar deal man so just keep paying me till I'm dead. Yeah, but if he gave that to you, he'd have to give that to Gallows, then the Undertaker, then Triple. You know what? I mean? Yeah, <laughs> that old story yeah. from back in the day. So we have yeah. the smelly gear that's in hell, the political stuff that's all in hell. Anything else yep. that you want to send to hell? Yeah, the Zodiac's gear. The, my, the guy that I had my very first match with. Just send that shit right down there forever. <laughs> and the plane flights to Japan, man. The plane flights to Japan sucked. Those were long and bumpy, bro. <laughs> now and, and I'm gonna make I'm gonna make uh, more flights as soon as the world's open back up. Like that's all set in place. The deal's done. But like something about that flight to Japan, like maybe say it's like a 13 hour flight from Minneapolis. Like for some reason over the Pacific, wherever it, for whatever reason, about halfway through that flight, bro, it starts bouncing and bouncing and bouncing. And I'm like, man, this sucks, dude. No matter what, I no, I always hated it. Even when you're in first class, like you must be. <laughs> hey, even if you're in first class, the plane the plane's still bouncing. That's not that shit ain't fun. It ain't fun when it ain't fun when you're up uh, when you're up forty thousand feet in the air and you ain't got nothing can't do nothing about it. I'm not a, I'm not a big flying fan. And uh, just to pick up on something you mentioned there is was is the deal with New Japan is that is that what's been finalized? Yeah, no, we've we've we nothing's been signed, but everything's been everything's been agreed upon. It's just waiting on the on the proper date when to go, what to do. Story-wise, everything everything's gonna pop up and work out. It's basically, the world needs to open up again. Yeah, and is it is is it as juicy the initial sort of talks as the potential AEW debut that didn't happen that the world's heard about? You know, it, it, you know, I, I, I talk with the Bucks almost every single day, and I talk. We talk. Me and Chris Jericho and Gallows talk every day. Um, yeah, it was juicy. We almost went there, you know. We almost went there. We almost went to, and like M- Impact offered us something too before we re-signed with WWE. But um, everything's good now. Like there, it's we're all we're all still friends, and we're we're trying to make everybody work together now. So we're gonna see what. Basically, now we're gonna see what we can pull off. That's what we want. We want to see how much we can how much we can get away with. And uh, just to try and be cheeky, just to relate this to Impact, obviously I know you're loving your time with Impact. The tag team division's flourishing. You've got the match against the North on Saturday, well, next Saturday night is where I sat here, a turning yep. point. But is there anything about life in Impact that you would send straight to hell? Apart from the North. <laughs> yeah, let's send the North down there. <laughs> I get. I have to send straight to hell the, uh, not, the not wrestling in front of people stuff. Like, this shit is getting old, man. Like, it, the, the only thing, like... I tried to explain to my dad. He was like, "Yeah, I can't watch NFL and I can't watch UFC without fans." My dad, but that shit's real, man. Like, what we do is like the only thing we got is the fans. So, like, that that's what makes like uh, with pro wrestling, you got to have people there cheering and you got to have people booing. It that just gives you that energy, man. So that's I gotta send I gotta send not no fans straight to fucking hell. <laughs> and is it is it just the sort of the adrenaline that comes from the fans? Not that not being there is that the only difference, or is there more to it in the performance aspect as well? I, for sure, the for sure the adrenaline for sure because like you know you, you without any fans, I mean sometimes I don't even really feel that I don't feel the nerves as much, you know. And I love I love pro wrestling, so I I have a singles match coming up on on Impact on Tuesday with Josh Alexander of the North, and like that was one of my first times having a my first seven time having a singles match in, in years and so like i was excited about it we had some time and we had fun and he's good man he's really good but like 
I remember afterwards we got back and it was still fun. And I said, dude, if that was if there was people here, man, that would have been really fun because because that's when that's when you start to feel it when you're popping each other with forearms and having fun and yeah, you need people. And anything from your time in New Japan back in the day? Was that anything to go straight to hell from there? The long bus rides, mm. the long bus rides did suck. That's just part of the that's just part of the way it is, man. You just you drive from. You'll drive from from Tokyo to Osaka. It takes about four and a half hours or whatever, and then you got to wrestle that day, and then you'll sleep, and then maybe you'll drive to Fukuoka, which is like twelve hours or something. Some and the long bus drives, the long bus drive sucks. It, it, you weren't on a plane, as but you know, do you want to be on a plane or a bus? I don't know because you know, once I got to WWE, I missed those long bus drives. So it's and always you're always got some. Yeah, outside of having a few cans, what do you do on these buses? What happens on the New Japan bus? Well, you got to remember on New Japan bus, you, you couldn't have a few cans because there was no there was no uh, no bathroom. So I mean, they wouldn't have minded if we would have had beers, right? But it's a lot different because in you know with the WWE bus, like you can do whatever you want. There's a bathroom, but like with with the New Japan buses, like these guys are quiet. They're chilling. Like the new, the, yeah. the Japanese guys are just relaxing and like it's only the foreigners sometimes that are laughing and being loud. But like you can't be drunk on there because it's just it's just different yeah i understand and i'm shocked we've made it this far into something like straight to hell and you haven't mentioned that angle with the new day and the, the testicles oh. in the jaw oh. <laughs> i was fully expecting well, that one to come up i i got it so say, man, there's there's so much stuff so I, <laughs> I didn't hate the the testicles in the jar and we didn't hate the and we didn't hate the doctor stuff we was like we think we thought we could have had a lot of fun with that it's just they, they just didn't you know we just didn't get a chance to go full with it um of course we hated you know the the new day set or the old day segment where mm. we had to do the old day that was pretty shitty and i think somehow we took the blame for that but you know working with the new day no matter what we were doing like man nothing but respect for them because they were they were good brothers and they were as helpful as they could possibly be and just quickly touching on the sort of creative process in wwe obviously we've seen with talking shop and mania you've got creative uh, prowess for days was that how many times did you go to the, the the writers and say look this i've got this idea and how many times did that not sort of come to fruition was that a sort of ongoing thing yeah i was probably oh for a hundred oh for a hundred i remember the one the one idea that i did have when it was like me and gallows laugh about this the one i think we were supposed to go two segments and and then lose whatever that was whatever and i it, but it was like a gauntlet match and i and i go why don't you guys just beat us quick like in in three or four seconds and i went i told the writer that and they went through and so they beat us in like three or four <laughs> seconds and i went of course the only pitch i <laughs> the one pitch i have works Bloody which is hell. fine i didn't i did because we don't care about winning and losing at all that doesn't matter it's like if, i'd rather just do it in three seconds than do it in 25 it doesn't and did that not put faith in you from the office saying oh he's had that great idea once why yeah. not just give him he's some got a more? great idea no <laughs> no it Right, but they had, they had a lot of faith in us, man. They they signed us to a, they signed us to a big contract. Just you know, something, 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 something happened, and you know, big thing called COVID hit. And yeah. The world, the world, the whole world changed for everybody. So there we have it. We've touched on a hell of a lot of things, but our time's running out. Carl, just before you go, anything you'd like to plug to the world right now? Talking Shop Mania 2 live on the Fight app. Download the Fight app. Search Talking Shop Mania 2. Order that son of a bitch. Friday the 13th, 10 p.m. Eastern Time. Um, we got a lot of shit going on. So buy the buy the wine, buy the bourbon, buy the beer once it goes. But go to go to tsnmania.com. Um, if you're listening and you're in the Baltimore area or around the Baltimore area, November the 22nd, we're doing a live talk and shop at 6 p.m. on a Sunday matinee, 6 p.m. at November 22nd. We're going to go to Jimmy's Seafood for a live talk and shop. And you can uh, you can find all about that on our website, tsnmania.com. And the animated series as well. I've been reading about yes, that. Yes, of course. The, the, the At The Real Gimmicks is, that's pretty cool, man. Toonstar reached out to us. They animated us and, and we read lines and it, it's it's pretty damn funny it's very south park ish and it's rated r just like everything we do and it's uh it's that's been one of our that's been one of our most fun things too like leaving wwe we've had so much such a big chance to do a lot of a lot of shit we just never thought we would get the chance to do because we just thought we were, were wwe lifers you know and well now we get to, now we're having fun so Right then, Carl, I've got to thank you for your time. Uh, Talking Shop and Mania on Friday, Turning Point on Saturday. Thank you for your time, Carl. Um, I'll 
just thank you. I'll see you next hey, time. Appreciate you, brother. I'm, <laughs> I'm really I'll, I'll good at this you, presenting stuff, mate. <laughs> I'll bring you some alcohol one of these days. Hey, I need some. I'm looking forward to it. Right. Thank you. Thanks, brother.